take a lot from this discussion. Well, like uh, Mr. Paresh mentioned, banking, financial services and insurance definitely plays an important role in driving our country's economy by providing a wide range of financial as well as allied services to a largely diversified demographic of the country. And it is this sector that has been the fastest adopter of latest technology, ensuring a robust growth in this sector. So to discuss about the same, uh, we will now head into a panel discussion. I'd like to take this opportunity and firstly welcome the moderator of the session. Kindly put your hands together as I invite Mr. Sanjay Prasad, Head BFSI India and MEA Mo Engage Inc. Come on everybody, let's give a round of applause. That is wonderful. I think you all can do a little better with the energy, a little louder, wonderful. And I need to see the same applause coming forward for the rest of the members of the panel discussion. Uh, I'd like to invite Mr. Padmanabhan, TA, Head of Digital Banking, City Union Bank. Can we please give it up for him, ladies and gentlemen. Next, I'd like to invite Mr. Vishwanathan Divya, AGM Marketing India Post Payments Bank. Come on, everybody. I see only a few of you clapping your hands. Lovely. Next, I'd like to invite gentlemen who was just here addressing all of you once again. Can we please welcome Mr. Paresh Shetty with a round of applause. President, Sales cloud for c Services. And then I'd like to invite Saket Navaskar, Director, Digital and Emerging Services, Explio Solutions Limited. Mr. Saket has only five members clapping for him. Come on, all of you gathered here, wonderful. And we have uh, one member joining us uh, virtually. I mean, making the best use of technology in these times. We have Mr. Sanket Zavade joining us uh, live through the virtual uh, Zoom meet. He is the head of digital banking of Saraswat Bank. Can we please give a round of applause for Mr. Sunday? Well, now I hand it over to our moderator, Mr. Sanjay. Over to you. All the best. Thank you so much. Hello. Thank you so much. Good morning and a warm welcome to everyone, a uh, warm welcome to my fellow panelists also. Uh, a big thank you to Quantic. Uh, it feels uh, so great, so nice uh, to step out and you know actually meet physically each one of you. Uh, that's what I was discussing with my fellow panelists that the last time that I ever stepped out of my house was on 12th uh, March 2020 which was again an uh, event and again I step out for an event so thank, thanks for giving that opportunity. Um, and, and Parish, unfortunately for me, my travel time was just 25 minutes today <laughs> as compared to yours. Uh, a quick round of introduction, uh, I would just like to go a bit more in depth so that uh, for all the members out here, when you will do your question and answers, you might take their experience and background uh, into picture while asking questions and we will keep 5 to 6 minutes. Uh, for Q&A, um, you know, to my left is uh, Saket, first to start with Saket. So Saket comes from various multiple uh, tech backgrounds, uh, including co-founding Trip Hobo, running it for eight years, and right now he is the director of uh, digital and emerging services with Explio. Uh, uh, to next, uh, left to Saket, uh, with me right now is Mr. Vishwanath Divya, uh, comes with rich 16 years experience um, with the likes of Apollo Munich, SDFC Argo, India First Life, and now of course heading marketing and AGM with India Post Payment Bank. Really looking forward to learn a lot from you as well. Uh, uh, to uh, left uh, of, um, uh, of uh, Vishwanath, uh, uh, right now with me is, um, give me a sec. Again, I'm so sorry, Paddy. Sorry, without mask, I really got confused, Paddy. It is Padmanavan TA, uh, as we call Paddy, uh, comes with again a very rich experience of doing unique technology things with ING, VSR, Indusin, uh, Citibank, and now heading digital banking with City Union Bank. And uh, finally, extreme left to me is uh, Paresh Shetty, friend and ex colleague from HP. Uh, I think richest experience amongst us, uh, 20 years, 28 years rich experience, almost half of that with HP and this was the president sales uh, cloud for cloud 4 c services and Paris actually set today's tone if you ask me about you know what what uh, uh, 
digital transformation is or what our topic today is like achieving customer centric digital transformation has really set the tone and saying that we all know that as Parish said you know that uh, uh, pandemic certainly has acted as an accident uh, to the digital transformation, but its customer centricity, which is to the core of growth in this PFSI uh, domain as such, last couple of quarters has been very, very critical to, uh, frankly speaking, in the PFSI space. And more and more consumers, as they're switching to digital, uh, I mean, let's, let's go to some core statistics. Uh, Parish mentioned that uh, this is close to, uh, you know, 2 billion, uh, you know, mobile app, uh, downloads and things like that. So if I just narrow down to the financial apps as such, you know, uh, financial apps in the uh, global uh, space as such, the year-on-year -year increment uh, in the downloads is approximately 15.4% or to, for that matter it was 4.3 billion uh, financial app download. If I ask about the sessions that is happening on financial apps globally, uh, that has increased uh, 20 percent and if, if you have to speak about the time spent on financial apps weekly it's it's close to now 57 minutes uh, weekly so that's like 63 percent you know uh, in, in increase in the time that people are spending uh, speaking about facebook whatsapp and whatnot but people are spending significant time in financial apps also uh, i think if all of the above you know, uh, statistics is an any indication that digital transformation is no longer an added advantage, but a rather competitive necessity. Uh, with that, I would like my uh, to start my question first with uh, uh, Vishwanath uh, out here. Is that, so Vishwanath, how BFSI sector can bring the high-tech offline service model to their online offerings? How do you create the right omni-channel strategy throughout the customer's journey to engage and retain customers? So these are the two questions I would like to put across. Yeah, uh, thank you so much and uh, very uh, good morning to all of my esteemed guests here. And uh, to answer this question, uh, see, uh, basically uh, I, I represent India Post Payments Bank, uh, which is uh, one of the differentiated bank in this country, uh, not only because of the licensing nature, uh, also because of the nature of uh, business and the geography that we operate in. So uh, when we came up with this uh, idea of bank, we were very sure that uh, the Bharat and the India has a digital divide and we have to do something about it so that uh, the financial inclusion in truest nature can actually uh, uh, be rolled out for the common man of this country. And uh, today, uh, in less than three years of the uh, rolling out of this bank, uh, we had an initial wide launch uh, in September 2018 uh, by the Prime Minister. But after that, uh, we have made significant uh, inroads into the uh, rural market especially. Since uh, we operate with the strength of the world's largest postal network, and uh, their strength lies in the in the uh, in the hinterland and the remote locations of this country, and they are very very strong there. So, out of 85 percent of the total rural half lakh post offices is is in the rural areas, and that is where the financial inclusion or mainstream banking has not reached yet in in all the years of independence that we have seen so far. Uh, even after the RRBs and a lot of uh, mainstream commercial banks operating out there. Uh, so what uh, that relates to uh, the you know, point that you are raising here is uh, since uh, these customers uh, really need very high touch, personalized, man-to-man, face-to-face customer service or interaction or guidance or maybe the kind of entire service delivery which was done physically so far and they have been uh, only knowing that they have never understood too much about the digital or maybe a technology per se because there was two things in mind. One is it's costly to afford and two is the trustworthiness. Uh, so we as a bank had our uh, kind of you know brand motto of uh, becoming uh, most affordable, accessible and trustworthy bank. Since the trust was already there, we were piggy riding on that trust. Uh, we started bringing the technology interface, we became uh, the kind of 100%, if not 100%, 99.9% of the digital bank. We have not used a piece of paper 
uh, the entire journey and we have got around four and a half crore customers today on board with us. Uh, every two seconds we have one customer opening account with us and which is done totally on you know, a biometric base, uh, are enabled. So what happened in the entire journey, sir, is uh, this high touch uh, habit of getting services done, uh, we actually feed it into that. We made this uh, tagline called Aapka Bank, Aapka, Aapke Dwar. And we took the entire banking in a micro ATM as a, as a walking bank through the postman walking into the household of a guy in a Silong uh, remote location of Philly area and getting service of all the banking uh, need that is that was actually thinking, unthinkable. So he can deposit, withdraw, change nominee, open account, uh, you know, withdraw cash, uh, you know, get get lot of banking. I mean, you can buy insurance, mutual fund, whatsoever. So by sitting at home, think of a situation where you don't have to do anything and applicable to the kind of size of country that we are talking about called India. Uh, now this high touch, uh, slowly what we have seen is now because it's not only financial inclusion that we are doing, we are also doing a digital inclusion because by the way we do the business, by the way we do banking at the doorstep using technology at the front end, uh, people are now getting more and more uh, you know, used to of understanding technology because they see the beauty of it coming to their doorstep. They understand the relevance of in today's time and day that how it actually can transform because when they do see their old postman who is on an average 43, 44 years of age, maybe a class 8th or 10th pass out, who have been doing it since ever, maybe his third generation or fourth generation is into the business of delivering the services, who has never done it in front of their eyes because he is a community guy, he lives in the same village. If he can transform, he becomes an example for the others to imbibe and especially the youth. So now, obviously, other factors have helped now. Uh, so uh, since uh, you know data is available widely across, which is our also uh, the the you know, backbone of entire service delivery. We find uh, a lot of people interviewed asking about you know, the app, uh, how it uh, operates, what what all are the kind of processes. People you know just uh, sit around the postman when he is in the village and try to see how beautifully the biometric devices work seamlessly with the application the, and, and everything which is uh, not being seen or heard by these guys. So first experience of them of digital uh, inclusion with the trust in the mind that it's a it's a initiative by the government of india and nothing will fail so that combination and obviously with the kind of infrastructure in terms of data and everything uh, people are now feeling very very confident about venturing into this uh, zone of uh, you know exposing themselves to the digital world and and Right from the journey, like you know, account opening to you know, kind of a different need being serviced, any kind of service grievance or any kind of requirement which is to be met. So we are trying to plug, you know, because obviously it's a journey just started. A lot of things are, are aspirational in nature, yet to be done. Uh, but slowly and steadily, what we are seeing is that people are very confidently putting their first step into the digital world, who have never been seen this and. Uh, not only unbanked, underbanked, they were actually not uh, a digital savvy guy at all. So that's where we are trying to bring it. We are now getting into uh, you know a lot of stuff like you know video KYCs and con you know uh, giving them access to us by having a mechanism they can reach out to us anytime, any anywhere. Uh, our people should be available. The postman availability to their doorstep. So we are trying to give more finishing touches to the entire journey. And slowly it will improve to a level that probably, uh, you know, the way we see the urban locations, everything being available to us in the, in the, in the uh, urban world, uh, that, that will get to their doorstep as well. So that's where we are looking at. And uh, this uh, high touch to, uh, you know, digital oriented or uh, technology oriented services, uh, I think people are loving it. and, and uh, India is going very fast.
Thank, thank, thank you so much, Vishwana. I think a very good example of, uh, I, I like the word uh, financial and digital inclusion and the speed to which you all are, uh, you know, onboarding new customers, 4.5 crore and customer every two seconds, uh, many, many congratulations to you. I think uh, one of the, yeah, I think one of the challenges to digital transformation is also, I think, change. And I have just demonstrated an example of change, you know. Uh, we had Sanket here digitally, I didn't introduce him, I just missed out and I was like only with the physical present people. So we have with here uh, Sanket Zavre with 12 years of experience working with the likes of Bank of Baroda, HDFC Access and now heading digital uh, with uh, Saraswat Bank. Uh, Sanket, my question will go to you right now. Uh, same question, uh, uh, you know, on that. Uh, how can BFSI sector bring uh, high-touch offline services model to your online offerings? And how do you create the right omni-channel strategy throughout the customer's journey uh, to engage and retain customers? Sanket, over to you. Uh, can't hear you. Can't hear you, Sanket. You're on mute. Uh, uh, am I on mute? Yes, sir. Am I on mute? You are. Okay. Uh, thank you, Sanjay. Uh, so I take a bit of a view from the event itself. Uh, so we are for the first time with this kind of hybrid event. Uh, so the same goes for the banking sector as well. So the banking sector, I believe, will always uh, be uh, hybrid uh, uh, you know, industry. How much ever we uh, move into technology, because uh, touch is uh, and trust is something that the customer looks uh, when they develops a banking industry. So. When we are building on an uh, open channel strategy, what we are looking into is basically providing all the services uh, that a customer can access in a digital branch over digital means. So we need mobile banking, we need internet banking, we need to be able to do a of AI, such as bots, water banking, etc. However, what is also important is the processes. So I think uh, while we Contactless payment of prominence, uh, our success 
so much uh, sanket that was a great example of uh, uh, omni channel experience and uh, consistency in touch point and uh, not moving back to point 1 uh, point uh, yeah point 1 as you said and you know just move ahead that's really a great example and congratulations to your folks survey award as well um i will take this question ahead to paddy uh, yourself uh, asking the same question on uh, you know how bfsi sector can bring uh, the high touch offline service model to online offering and and uh, like as sir kept giving great examples of omni channel strategy how to create the right uh, omni channel strategy throughout a customer's uh, journey to engage and retain customers thanks uh, sanjay so um uh, you know the panelists uh, have already touched upon some of the major aspects and uh, both vishwanath and Uh, Samke talked about their experiences um, in terms of CUB, right? I mean, how we looked at it as see, with every challenge comes the opportunity, right? So uh, we took it as an opportunity to transform ourselves uh, fundamentally. So uh, I am a uh, COVID joiner as well, right? So I joined the bank in June 2020, and the first thing that we did was to launch video KYC in 10 days. We knew our businesses were on standstill because nobody is walking into your branches. We were largely uh you know a uh, branch based in terms of our distribution model the first thing we did uh, was to you know now uh, leverage uh, you know technology to start onboarding customers right so that's where your journey started uh, currently for anything on the liability side we are fairly comfortable uh, and uh, 90% of our acquisition today happens digitally now for a bank which has always been or largely you know uh, a branch led distribution to get it to 90% in terms of digital uh, acquisition uh, uh, you know was was something which uh, we uh, take pride in terms of uh, getting there uh, right uh, in terms of uh, you know now let's say you know one part is probably acquisition right and and uh, that the the onboarding in terms of a paperless onboarding is cutting across business lines so while we started on the liability side slowly we are moving into consumer and msme segments which is again the forte for the bank and we are getting into uh, 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 you know a, a culture where more and more uh, paperless and uh, you know digital onboarding becomes the order of the day uh, uh, with customers being more comfortable uh, you know uh, doing stuffs themselves and uh, you know with all the data which is available see today with the india stack and with the kind of information that you have uh, and the kind of api ecosystem and uh, i think parish also mentioned it uh, in terms of open banking 
So today you have all these APIs and the infrastructure which is there for you as banks. Now you can leverage it yourself and you can extend it to partners and we are getting there. So we have started off where we are leveraging now these services and uh, we have also opened our banking services to partners to kind of plug in. Uh, right. So, so, so that culture is being set now uh, from moving away from a traditional uh, branch-led distribution model into a digital distribution model. Uh, moving on to the engagement side, right? Uh, and uh, people did uh, discuss this as well. So, I'll just give you one example, right? The bank used to have about fifteen thousand to twenty thousand requests for updating form fifteen G and H right towards your tax returns, right? You don't want TDS to be deducted on your deposits. So that's a segment which we had. So there were a lot, huge deposit customers that the bank had. And uh, what we did was, um, you know, we launched the service on WhatsApp banking. So we did not talk about traditional core transaction services. So what we told all of those customers who would have otherwise walked in, and these are senior citizens, these are people today uh, whom you don't want them to you know, kind of get infected, right? So you don't want them walking to your branches. And uh, you know what we did uh, to across to all those customers month on month who used to be coming into our branches and submitting this, we sent them a text with a WhatsApp link and said, you know, just click on this link and you could do it. And interestingly, uh, you know, digital as an adoption for senior citizens, right? So you can't get them onto internet banking, right? Very few of them would come in and adopt internet banking or mobile banking. But WhatsApp is a service which everyone embraces. Today, everyone is chatting with their family and there are so many groups they are part of where they're collaborating. So we found these intelligent ecosystems where we could plug in. Uh, one more example in that line in terms of engagement is largely we used to be a branch-led model even on engagement, right? So typically if someone had an issue, they used to walk into our branch. People just came up for coffee, right? So it was a very different scenario in terms of how, um, you know, engagement. It's the, you know, good old traditional uh, banking, right? Uh, which we were uh, also, uh, 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 you know, uh, there, I mean, which we were also part of, right? So, uh, but let's say, you know, during the pandemic time, uh, we embraced cloud telephone, right? And we ensured that all these customers, you know, for whom it could be various reasons, deposit maturities, birthday wishes, it could be things about their accounts, uh, anything you know where you see a sudden outflow on an FD, you you don't know whether that person is in any issue and whether he needed a loan. So there were use cases for which uh, you know the bank reached out to the customer by embracing cloud telephony, and which got integrated with their CRM. So the employees themselves, uh, while they were also you know facing the heat of the pandemic, could be out of anywhere, still have a view about their customers from their mobile app and talk to them. Uh, uh, you know, on a call, and then you know there were intelligent alerts being served from the back end. Uh, you know, to probably help them uh, both from a servicing as well as a sales standpoint. So these are stuffs which we did to uh, you know sort of transform our uh, largely physical and branch-led distribution to a digital distribution. And the other key aspect is also about retention, right? During pandemic. Uh, you know, there are banks which are not going to engage with their customers. They are set to, you know, probably lose their loyal customers, right? And you only have limited staff and you only have limited people coming into your branches. So how do you prioritize? What do you do? How do you ensure that the same amount of staff are going to also service your clients who are still going to come in, also are going to, you know, engage with the uh, prospects and are also going to retain those loyal customers, those uh, niche customers who have been, uh, you know, having a good relationship value with you, right? So that's where the uh, predictive analytics and the layer comes in, right? Where you probably tell your branch team as to who are the ones you should go after, who are the ones whom you should be calling, right? And at what time, if that is possible, right? So, so all these permutations and combinations in terms of a data layer and leveraging data to kind of actually go ahead and help your staff during pandemic to prioritize those phone calls, uh, you know, which will be value generating was another stuff which we uh, did. And the last but not the least is the technology infrastructure, uh, infrastructure in itself, right? With the kind of growth in volumes and I think again, uh, both of you touched upon it as well, right? The kind of uh, 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 explosive growth on UPI transactions and the financial transactions, be it card transactions or net banking or, uh, you know, your payment systems, right? So your technology infrastructure also has to live up to it, right? I mean, and uh, people today will probably uh, fry you on Twitter if your platform is out for maybe, you know, a few hours. So you have to be, you know, constantly looking at your 
uh, availability and you know looking at your technology infrastructure and processing that kind of a throughput now nobody likes you know when you're scanning a qr and your transaction does not go through and it says you know oops sorry uh, uh, for some reason you know this transaction did not go through you don't want that experience and uh, so there there is a lot of work which went behind the scenes in terms of getting our technology infrastructure up there uh, right for us to handle the kind of volumes which we are seeing which was unprecedented so there is about 2.5x growth in terms of transaction volumes that we were seeing uh, you know pre and post uh, pandemic so uh, these are things that uh, i wanted to share with the audience uh, thank, so thank you so much Barry. it was really enlightening and while, while uh, each of our uh, panelists have covered very different different aspects and you covered the aspect of technology ecosystem where you spoke about bots, you spoke about uh, WhatsApp and backend integration with CRM and uh, you know uh, the IDR uh, integration with CRM and what not and, um, and it's, it's really challenging. A traditional bank moving to digital and going to the extent of 90% digital acquisition are very kudos to you all. And uh, the last aspect you spoke about technology infrastructure, true, like what Paresh put in the slide a 4 lakh crore uh, you know, UPI transaction and, and the technology players have to play a very very important role and with that my same question goes to uh, Paresh uh, that in, in this uh, annual of moving from you know the, the high touch offline to online uh, offering uh, you know how does players like you all Paresh uh, you know uh, the cloud 4C plays a role would you like to answer that? Uh, thanks, Sanjay. In fact, most of them covered the entire uh, aspect and they are the real life examples because they have used it, they face the challenges and so very clearly technology has to change and uh, that, that's a fact that they have. And if you see, the customer journey becomes very important and defining customers, be it B2B, be it B2C, what kind of customers you are engaging with, what kind of customers you would want to acquire. Uh, depending on that you will basically change your entire mode okay so where your customers are where are they engaging so one of the aspects which i think which could be relevant to all those panelists out here those who are actually in the forefront of you know implementing this one is social listening like and i, I like the word he said he can fry you in twitter with that qr code work, doesn't work so how are you listening to it and where are the change requests coming from so that becomes a very important and that's how you do all the different modes so that's we call it as omni-channel. You should be able to acquire customers from anywhere. So that's and how are you doing it? You know, where are your customers? If you kind of you know make a demographics of your customers, where are they going? Where are which are the platforms? Uh, you know, they are kind of uh, you know uh, subscribing to. So how do you address that? How do you reach them? And how do you make sure you're able to uh, reach what their uh, requirement is and you're able to fulfill it? So that becomes extremely important. So, um, you know, that, that becomes omni-channel, customer journey, touching them at various points and different kind of devices. I say they could be on laptop, they could be on phone and mostly now it is phone and within phone different apps. Okay, you know, there is going to be a super app coming in and that's why you talked about, you know, you should be ready for API stuff, you know, so you should be able to share the data. Sometimes it is good, sometimes it is bad, right? I mean, so all those being open to all those things is going to be extremely important. I think app modernization is going to be extremely important as well because the legacy apps will not support it. So I, I talked about it and that's going to do. And probably in future, uh, in the next course, I would be talking about the technologies that will help support them as well. So this currently we are talking about the offline method. So offline, I think, is going to be very, very relevant in terms of, you know, the smart variables. You know, who are the customers who are wearing smart watches? Can we reach them on their watches? Okay, to, to acquire them. There are smart speakers that are coming, you know, can you integrate with Alexa and the Google Home? How do you make sure you're able to reach them and say, hi, Paresh, you know, uh, can I help you with something? And then how do you close the transaction and make it very seamless and very, very easy? You know, ATMs we're talking about and we'll talk about biometrics as well. I mean, passwords and PIN codes will be gone and it will be about your face, your voice recognition, your thumb, all that. You know, can I walk into it? We talked about ATMs. Can I walk into an ATM and I don't even have to put the card and it says, Hi Sanjay, welcome. Tell me how can I help you? And just with your voice, he recognizes it. With your face, he recognizes it as Sanjay and then he's able to transact. And probably it's a virtual assistant out there and he's able to understand his, what his 
what Sanjay is all up to and he, he can even say, you know, can I help you because you've been looking out for some car insurance, can I help you there? So that's how things will change, you know, and I want to limit this because, you know, all the folks who have implemented have done it. But things are going to change and we got to, you know, adapt to those changes, okay? Being everywhere and being consistent, okay, to the customer request is going to be important. Um, thanks, thanks, Parish. And, uh, uh, Saket, would you also be able to throw light on this topic? Yeah, so thank you. Uh, I'm audible? Yeah, you are. Okay. So, uh, XPO basically come with, uh, uh, XPO has started with a new initiative uh, of uh, digital transformation services. And XPO predominantly has been a quality led company. Uh, and we have been uh, helping the BFSI space uh, in their quality initiatives uh, since uh, you know, 20 years now. Uh, and uh, very recently, uh, we have sort of identified a few areas where we see we can add uh, significant value to the digital transformation initiatives. Uh, one area that we see is cyber security, where uh, we have uh, helped a very, very large uh, uh, payments company, which is sort of uh, the last mile organization that uh, goes on to the streets and enables the shops and uh, uh, or even the online players uh, to make their payments. Uh, for the cyber security uh, aspects of uh, the entire journey. Uh, and this is where we realize that uh, CIOs in multiple banks have a lot of choices to make today. Multi-channel, only channel, I know something that works in a particular region may not work in some other region. And all those uh, choices are associated with the cyber security risk. That is one area where uh, we have sort of created a big niche for us. I would say big and niche because of the size of our service in that area. Uh, the other space where uh, we are working uh, closely in the BFSI space is the performance aspect uh, that Padman Lagan has uh, I know, highlighted. Um, you know, customers today are not going to uh, come down and you know, wait for your app to load. Um, and the kind of adoption that has happened in the last one year or so, uh, none of the uh, you know uh, BFSI players probably have been planning for this kind of an infrastructure in the past, right? And uh, um, when it comes to concurrency, some people are saying more than you know 10 to 15 thousand concurrent users at the same time. How do we give a reliable service to uh, uh, that kind of concurrency that is coming in. Uh, so that is an area where uh, we sort of have focused on and using these two as our prime uh, sort of differentiators in our offering uh, to the BFSI space, um, we started uh, building uh, our digital transformation services on uh, different uh, uh, aspects of even the user experience, starting right from the user experience to the uh, last mile conversion. Um, that is uh, something that uh, uh, we have done uh, as a uh, priority. The other area is of course cloud. Uh, we are uh, enabling uh, cloud adoption uh, for uh, the BFSI space. Uh, but the underlying aspect of uh, cloud is going to be how well the data is going to be managed, uh, data engineering. And we have seen some really, really uh, forward thinking CIOs who come down and say, hey, this is going to be a journey. The data that we are collecting today is just a slice of the data that is going to power my AI in the future, right? And I want to be ready for that. And so let's plan for that. Let's plan on how my AI will behave two or three years down the line. And there, let's figure out what kind of data engineering I need today. And that's where I think uh, uh, the on-prem plus the cloud combination and the journey planning from uh, the current infrastructure that some of the uh, customers have on-prem to moving them on cloud and then making sure that uh, they're ready for the AI revolution is something that uh, we are really, really keen to work with uh, our partners on. So that's, that's our piece. Thank you so much, Sakit. I think so that really plays a significant uh, role in the journey for uh, you know, uh, banks to adopt uh, digital transformation. Uh, so, Barry, um, I mean, like, before I go to uh, you for, for my next question, a quick one. It's like, 
uh, just wanted to read a BCG survey of global executives which says that 90% of marketers are now using AI to optimize the customer journey, transform how they engage with customers and deliver most rewarding experience. Saying that, uh, we all know that improving customer experience can go a long way uh, to supercharging channel performance, fueling revenue growth, profits, etc. So my next question to you, Patty, is, uh, and we will have to make it very quick, uh, you can even summarize uh, with this uh, answer uh, from your perspective, like what role can AI and ML play in improving customer experience and engagement in the banking landscape? Okay, Sanjay, so you've thrown a very hard question to be uh, summarized uh, shortly. Okay, I'll put it this way. So, uh, typically what's a marketer's holy grail, right? He wants to know exactly what product to sell, where to sell, and uh, uh, you know, I mean, how to sell, right? If I were to put the five W's and one H, I think AI is going to solve it for you, right? There is no way that you could customize a product and a solution uh, uh, you know, at, at that sort of a personalization. See, today, if we go by any rule-based systems, that would create a cohort which would be in tens of thousands to a product, right? If I were to just do a direct mapping. But what AI and ML today can do, can and with digital capabilities, right? Typically, uh, you know, you can come up with those kind of products and services which are extremely tailored to an individual customer, at least to a certain extent, uh, you know, few, at least few hundreds of customers and you can create a proposition for them. And this was never possible uh, probably earlier, but now what marketers have is that ability. And with technology in terms of, uh, you know, the marketing automation and the, uh, uh, you know, omni-channel delivery uh, uh, layer that you have, you can create such an experience, uh, right, for him to, you know, consume a service when he needs it that the channel of his choice, right? It could be, an, it could be the financial apps which we are talking about, uh, it could be that, you know, he's on your uh, website uh, where he is. It could be at an ATM. I think Parish gave a brilliant example there, right? I mean, if you could just talk to your ATM or if your ATM could know what you want, right? So all these multi-channel touch points uh, getting converged and where there is an AI engine which is sitting on top of it and customizing, uh, you know, products and services for you, uh, I think that's the way ahead for marketers. And uh, thankfully, technologies have evolved uh, for us to, you know, take it to the next level now. Thank you so much, Paddy, and thanks for making it quick. Uh, Sanket, uh, the same question uh, goes to you. Uh, you know, uh, in fact, uh, very well covered by Paddy, what, where, uh, when, uh, you know, so, and, and, and we are happily at Moen Gage, that's what exactly we do. So, Sanket, I would like to hear the answer from you on, uh, you know, uh, what role AI and ML can play in improving, uh, play in improving customer experience and engagement. Uh, so, Paddy, uh, very much but a couple of more points that I would like to say is, you know, uh, on the daily basis, we see, you know, millions of, millions of transactions happening. The volume of data that is getting generated uh, at the back end. Uh, what do we do out of this data? How do we deploy AI to, you know, collect and analyze this data? Not only to build new products, but also to improve the current services. For example, today, uh, you know, just as an example, if I am getting a uh, share dividend in my account, okay, the next time I go to my board just to check my balance, okay, I work, or I go out of my customer service representative just for a simple query, which is unrelated to anything to do with share, but there is a prompt, okay, which comes up on the board, uh, that there is an IPO, IPO credit to it, okay, uh, or the customer service representative is prompted to ask this kind of question. So, this kind of data analysis, you know, that is what I think will make a difference uh, in the customer staying loyal with the bank because finally, uh, you know, in today's world, it will be experience uh, that counts. Probably, you know, uh, you might, you might uh, offer 50 bits uh, less on your housing loan account, but if your entire journey uh, is a physical one and, uh, you know, you have to think about you have lost you, Sankit. I think. Uh, Vishwanath, why don't you take up this question on role of AI and ML playing in improving uh, customer experience and engagement in the banking space? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, uh, as Paddy said, AI is the tool of tomorrow. Obviously, have a right, but yes, we have long way to go. 
Uh, as a marketeer, what I see is uh, customer need after onboarding. This is the challenge start not at the time of acquisition. Challenge starts once the onboarding happens. How will a bank of sizes like us or maybe any other bank who has got so many customers with different needs and preferences, how are we going to engage with them uh, productively as well as keeping them happy with our services? Uh, and since loyalty is, is you know, uh, waning very, very fast, so engagement for me is going to be a challenge which is going to be addressed by AI very, very uh, well. Uh, for example, I'm just saying, uh, as a marketer, if I have to place a billboard on a street with a lot of people coming in, how should I I use the data looking at the people, crowd, age, size, gender, to display the content which is going to attract them? So that's going to be the way that we are looking forward to. If I have to put some kind of a banner on the website or the uh, apps or the advertising space in the web, how, how I'm going to address different culture, taste, uh, affinity, at the same time, uh, how I'm going to create a face which resembles human but not found anywhere on the earth but exactly talks the same message which makes me familiar with and confident that oh, this is, this is my company. So AI is going to help me in going to do that all well uh, and also give me confidence that my customer uh, feels connected, remains engaged with us and continue giving us revenue in the life cycle. So thank, thank you so much, Krishna. Uh, Saket, why don't you sum, summarize our panel discussion and then I'll ask Parish to take questions from the audience, please. Sure. Uh, so I think uh, in the summary, we sort of uh, covered uh, how, I mean, with uh, Vishwanath's uh, very interesting story about taking uh, banking to the unbanked with the digital transformation going on in parallel. Very interesting story there. And sort of augmented uh, with Sanket and uh, Padmanabhan's uh, inputs uh, on how they managed their journeys in the last one year or so. And of course, uh, Parish did set up uh, the tone for the whole conversation in his uh, keynote, uh, continuing on that. Um, just to chip in on the AI conversation here, I think. Uh, uh, I mean, one of the best solutions out there is recommendation engines, right? Uh, to answer the marketing problems, uh, to answer what we see on screens, to answer what uh, customers should choose, and also for the decision makers. So, um, building recommendation engines like what an Amazon has or a Netflix has is no longer, you know, the territory of big tech, right? Uh, it can be. Uh, tried and tested in limited markets by large banks and sort of then rolled out slowly in different journeys, right? So uh, I think uh, it is time uh, that these kind of uh, new initiatives might have already been on your tables uh, today. And I think uh, uh, AI will sort of, uh, and ML combined, uh, will sort of power these very soon uh, for uh, not only the last mile customers but also for the CIOs making these decisions of you know marketing or operations. Thank you, sir. Uh, Sake, that's a good good example. Recommendation can is a good example of AI. Uh, do we have questions from the audience? Uh, please introduce yourself before asking the question. Yeah. Good afternoon. I'm audible. Very much. Yeah, my name is Sunny Bandari and I'm from IFCO Tokyo General Insurance. So as we people are in digital uh, payment era, online transaction is the name of the day. So uh, me myself have not visited a bank branch from uh, 2015 or 16. I have not visited any bank branch. Uh, everything is available on my smartphone, be it opening a fixed deposit or PPF or even paying my school son fee. Uh, we are very much comfortable with this. But uh, what about senior citizens? Being in insurance industry, uh, people, senior citizens, talking about people who are more than 60, they don't still, uh, they prefer to go to bank and do NEFT or they still issue checks. I mean, the people are not uh, comfortable with online transactions. 
when i talk to them they say ki there are daily in newspaper there is ad that some phishing is happening or some qr code has been sent and all the account has been uh, they have deprived of their hard earned money so what is your take on this i mean this is a huge segment huge huge segment and they people have money also with them but they people are not comfortable with online transactions and uh, digital payments so i mean this is my query Vishwanath, you want to take that question, or Parish, would you like to take the question? So I, I just support that. So absolutely right, and actually senior citizen. That's what. Firstly, the banking and the insurance segment has to first uh, take into uh, you know the fact that senior citizens are your customers, and we got to retain them, and we have to see how you make them comfortable. You know, senior citizens come from a generation which is also slightly less than the you know it's not the alpha generation, but the ones before the millennial generation. but having said that and i mean you would agree in the last 2 years the way senior citizens have adopted to technology is phenomenal i mean i never seen my dad using my uh, he uses phone more than me okay i mean be it whatsapp be it some app and you know regional languages and all that so if if insurance and if, first of all you know of course uh, you know lot of new technology will be a little difficult for them but we got to cater to their needs and that's why i said personalization becomes or customization becomes very important first segment your customers and based on customer segmentation you got to see what their needs are and learn social learning that's what where are they more found on and where are they more comfortable if whatsapp is more comfortable like he talked about you know the whatsapp use can we use virtual assistant before they coming in can i get a virtual rm talking to him and if he feels virtual rm is also becoming difficult there should be an opportunity for him to you know reach to the real uh, branch person and talk get that feel so that becomes important i mean i liked uh, india post where they said the postman comes to the house okay i mean can that be possible for senior citizen you know so that make it different or can we do a video call so we got to adapt to it and that becomes very important that technology is not about you know doing the best thing the right time in a more efficient way it is whether technology helps your set of customers transact in the way they want that becomes important okay of course some people will adopt to the new technology but some people will not can you make your technology adaptive to to the way they think and the way they want so that becomes important and that's how i would put it i mean i don't know if there are any other views see a uh, very interesting question in fact i mean we faced practical challenges in terms of taking digital to senior citizens so whatsapp was one such initiative but i think as organizations you have to build trust factor with your consumers so there are two initiatives i'll just talk about in terms of building trust factor one was Uh, when let's say today a relationship manager calls up anyone right earlier uh, let's say even if it's a cloud telephony provider uh, i mean and uh, you know typically uh, you know you get these anonymous calls you are very uh, you know i mean as in let's say uh, not so open to kind of have those conversations with an anonymous number so what we did was we got ourselves as verified uh, as a business user with one of the again uh, solutions in the market right so that there is a trust factor which is getting built on to the call which is coming to you right and it could happen on even sms today so there is a google verified sms service which is available today so your sms can today stand out with a logo and with a very customized uh, brand name which is going to set you apart from the industry so i think organizations will have to invest in technology which builds trust uh, to the folks and then you start educating them about you know only uh, you know probably adopting digital channels which are coming from the trusted source that's one of the options i think uh, that can alleviate some uh, you know concerns that they may have yeah but sajeev there was a very interesting question thank you so much any more la- one last question we can take uh, from the audience thanks um my name is ruchi i am from niit uh, all of you spoke about digitizing customer journeys um and shared real stories Uh, so when you're putting technology in front uh, to interact with customers, there are still humans working with that technology. Not just developers, but even the business people who have never worked with technology, they are now handling that technology. Like what 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 you said is, uh, you still have to build trust, right? There are still humans doing it. So how do you prepare your people to now work with technology and you know still create great experience for your customers? Yeah. 
see, I think I'll initially take the answer and then allow the panelists to, uh, you know, answer it. Uh, your question is right. It's, it's how do, um, you know, uh, we, we, we prepare our people, how do we build uh, people to work on this technology. So today, uh, see, the whole this topic itself is customer centricity, okay, uh, playing an important role of, uh, you know, um, the digital transformation. So it's always customers on the front. It's, it's always keeping in mind, as Parish also said, you know, how, am I making life easy for the senior citizen? Am I making life easy for this uh, Z gen, for this millennial, etc.? Uh, how is it that I have to make services available to them? That comes first. Then on the back end, you know, how do I make it available through touch points, through omni channel, through processes, uh, through engagement methodology and all? And to do that is when today technology has really evolved. When we are speaking of cloud, when we are speaking of uh, you know these kind of technologies where everything is uh, drag and drop, everything is where you first yourself experience of how is it that I'm presenting it to the customer. And it's not that back end technology I've done something and I have to somehow throw those numbers to the customer. No, it's about you know we spoke about things like. Uh, 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 I think Sanket also spoke about going to the ATM, you know, an ATM bot started speaking to me, this is my last transaction, this is what I did. So today your historic data, your current data, your behavioral pattern, everything is getting uh, taken into account and then it's used as uh, even Sanket said, recommendation, you know, it's taken into account and that is utilized to decide how do I recommend something, how do I, you know, uh, uh, propose something of its an existing services, how I bring that service up front, you know, advising, uh, a very good example of Paddy, that this advice coming through uh, technologies where I'm having my brand, brand logo, that trust, etc., you know, and that's how you're preparing people to use technology to bring this in front of you as a service, as a recommendation. Uh, anyone else want to add, I'm more than happy, and that would be the last. <laughs> Okay, I think, I just wanted to summarize a few technology points which I wanted to do and then all of us are in different, uh, the same, not answering typically your question but you know there are, you know all of us spoke about and there are some seven or eight technologies which could be relevant to different and of course we have to keep the customer first in mind depending on what kind of customers. One we talked about AIML, which is first, I think we all know, and we'll all talk about how many chatbots each bank have or financial institution. So we'll talk about how many apps, how many chatbots. Okay, the the second portion will be on DLT and uh, blockchain, which you will start hearing now. Okay, blockchain is being implemented abroad and that will start coming here. So DLT will help you to manage across banks, open banks, so it will decentralize the manage and blockchain will store historic data and will also make sure it become more transparent and publicly available. Third is biometrics. So biometrics is becoming more and more so passwords. You don't have to remember so many passwords and suppose it. So your your face, your you know identity, voice, everything will become important. 5G is around the corner, so edge computing that will become so from the app you'll be able to download very fast and data is very cloud computing, we all talked about cloud computing. That's the fifth thing that I would talk about. Cloud computing. Um, I know because the data bill, I don't know if you can go 100% to the cloud, but hybrid cloud will be a reality. So, you know, you'll have some data on cloud which are non-critical, but on mission critical, you might have it on hybrid. So that, that's where it will be. Um, Internet of Things, well, I don't know how much Internet of Things, but in the insurance industry, Internet of Things is going to be very important, your driver behavior and all that. All this data has to be, you know, kind of, uh, you know, gathered, collected, analyzed, and then probably actions to be taken. So, Internet of Things is going to be important, uh, especially in the insurance segment, banking, little bit, but it uh, depends, it varies from banks to bank how they are doing it. Okay, uh, augmented reality and virtual reality, that's where I was talking about. You know, if you have, you know, augmented reality, so you feel like you're going into a branch and doing the different things. So, virtual reality and augmented reality will start coming into play. And especially now with driverless cars and all those things happening, you will see a lot of changes coming there. And last is quantum computing. That's where the technology comes in. Uh, so that's 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 how it is. And all these are available, you know, as a marketing giving as a service, okay, <laughs> which we all provide as well. Oh, thanks, thanks for some of the inquiries. I think with that we'll close this panel discussion. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you.